Okay, we're doing a little video here on, on a Dinky Toy aircraft. And what we have here, for those who don't know Dinky Toys, uh, they're British toys. They're made by the Meccano Corporation. And uh, they were known worldwide, basically. Everywhere the British Empire went, everywhere the British went, there's Meccano and Dinky Toys. And here's a Meccano magazine from 1936. Here's some of the stuff that uh, lucky boys of that era could get. Trying, and somewhere in here we see Dinky Toys. Okay, so on the Dinky Toys, there's the Dinky Toy airplanes, which we're going to sort of focus on, if we can focus, that is. And we're going to focus on the Percival Gull. That's this little guy. Oh, where is it? Number 60C, anyway. Come on, focus. <laughs> Don't you love it? So, uh, anyway, the Percival Gull. And it was a uh, funny little plane. Here's an example here. And what was it about this plane that made it something a dinky toy would uh, <laughs> want to make? So uh, what it is, they basically, here's a nice flying magazine, cute young smoking aviatrix there, something you'd like to be. And here it is, there's uh, Percival Gull. And there's the little plane they made like it, Principal Gull. And here we see for 1,200 and something pounds you can get one. And they explain, I've got a bit of a reflection there. Um, they explain what it does. And, and it was particularly popular at the time because it was used to set a lot of records. Simple little plane, but they used it to fly solo South Africa and back, which is a first. And then to Australia. There's guys like Amy Mollison, Cape Town and Back, H.L. Brook, Beryl Markham, Kingsford Smith. Kingsford Smith, the Australia Sydney Airport is still named after him. So here's another aviation magazine. And then here we see none other than Amy Mollison who used Ovaltine to help her do what she did. And it says here, my constant habit of drinking Ovaltine is fully justified as I am feeling 100% fit even after my strenuous flight. And that's a pretty good claim for Ovaltine because you think of flying, say, uh, as, as the uh, Kingsford Smith did, he flew something like seven days to Australia. Here's another little, little card and it mentions Kingsford Smith here. I think we have that upside down, right? Yeah. And he set the England-Australia record without straining himself or the machine, which is good. So, what we have then is what Dinky produced. And they produced something like 39 variants of that particular toy. Each one is a little different. These, these ones are the early ones. Whoops. <laughs> they just had wingtips that were colored. Like that, slightly different color perhaps. They came in all sorts of different colors. Seems every paint that ever went into the Dinky factory ended up on a plane. They also came in a little box like this. Let's see, you see the, can you see that there? No, we'll try this one. Okay, souvenir scale souvenir. That was Amy Mollison, the Oval Team girl. That's what she did. And they issued this toy in commemoration of her flight. And we have two of them here with slightly different tails, open windows, you can see, and the call letters in blue. So that's that variant. Then we had this other plane here. Call letters are now in black, closed windows. In black, whoop, and open windows. You can see there. And they came in little boxes like this. And they're sort of interesting because you can look on the edge of the box and you can see this was printed in October 38, this was printed in November 39, 2,000 copies were made of that box in the printer. And down here we have yet another variant. This is the uh, white open windows, so a fairly early one. Under the wing, uh, the later ones under the wing had uh, Percival Gull or whatever stamp. That one doesn't. 
this one is a blue DAZO. And there we go. You see it says personal gall underneath there. Closed windows, black. Registration. Then they had post war ones like this. This is a light green and a dark green. Those are regarded as variants, both closed windows. This one now says light tourer underneath the wing. So that's a later one. Light tourer. And an interesting one here is this one here. This is the nice color, legitimate color, but it's a repaint. And you can tell if you look closely, you get to see what they call orange peel on the wings. Somebody sprayed it. The dinky toy paints are uh, absolutely like mirrors. There's no little ripples to them, no texture to the paints. So, and here we have this one. This came, they put out just before the war to try and keep up with what was going on. Uh, there's a dark camouflage, this one. They have a light camouflage one also. This is also it says personal gull under the wing, but in the catalog it says it's a two engine fighter, or a two seater fighter. Rather. Well, you'd hate to see that one go up in the Kingston ME 109. And, oh yeah, here's a couple more DZOs. This is light yellow and dark yellow. So uh, a variant and nothing under the wings. And here are two ostensibly identical red ones, post-war. Yeah, sometimes they focus and sometimes they don't. So this one says under the wing, looks like a mismatch, mismatch. And that one just says light tour. So this one is sort of interesting because they use the old wings, the pre-war wings, and overstamp them from Percival Gall to light tour. So that makes an interesting little change. This is another nice silver one. And it's interesting to see a good preserved dinky toy plane because you tend to see older ones that are a bit worn or aged. But when they were new, they were like little gems and kids just wanted them. I think finally we have this DZO here. Looks a little more beat up. I can't quite see, not registering. Anyway, so there we have about 13 variants. They made um, something like 39 of them. And, uh, oh yeah, they also mentioned here. They also came in boxes like this. And down in the corner here we see, yep, you got it, a Percival Gull with his little speed lines, so you know how speedy it was. And one more little thing. Here's another album of cigarette cards. And in here, let's get rid of this for a second, we see the gull somewhere. Here it is. There it is. Percival Gull. And they give some more information on it. So that was why it was a popular plane at the time, because it was exciting times for air travel. The first routes to Australia, people realized they could go to Australia and back by air. and. Uh, they were excited, though it took seven days for that Kingsford Smith to get to Australia in uh, no no radio, just a compass, uh, no landing fields to speak of, seven days, and uh, it's like flying there in a Cessna 172. And anyway, so that was the spirit of the times and why this toy was uh, so popular. So I hope you enjoyed that, and uh, we'll see if we can find some more. Tea. Oh yeah, one last thing, <laughs> a book here, great book. West with the Night, Beryl Markham, a corker, a thundering good read, as they say, and there's her Percival Gull making a landing on one edge of the Atlantic, I forget which, whether it was Ireland in a bog or Newfoundland in a bog, but in a bog, definitely. And there's a good one, too, if you're looking for more interesting uh, literature. So, and the other thing, yeah, those guys, you might want to look them up. Uh, let's see, Kingsford Smith. Amy Mollison, H.L. Brook, Beryl Markham, all got fascinating stories. And, oh, the other thing, the toy was produced from 34 to 49, so 14 years it went along. And uh, that's about it. Hope you enjoyed that.